Hello, everybody. So the next presentation will be by Ted Laderos talking about teaching clinicians data analytics with R. Thanks, Beth. And I just want to thank everyone. This has been an awesome morning, and it's, it's really been cool to see all of the communities of practice that everyone's kind of established. And Cass, I just want to just shout out that, like, I think that work your, your talk was amazing. So. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about our experience uh, teaching data analytics with R. Um, let's see. Come on. Okay. So, like, we've been teaching this data analytics course for about six years. So, this is just kind of what I'm going to cover today. So, we'll do kind of a brief introduction to the course, uh, introduction, talking about the course, and talking about the outcomes. So, who am I? So, um, I'm an assistant professor at Oregon Health and Science University. Um, I consider myself, uh, well, I'm a bioinformatician, bioinform but I also consider myself a professional collaborator. I just love working with other people, enabling um, them to kind of go farther with analysis in R. Um, just a quick plug, so I'm an R Studio certified instructor. So these are kind of two kind of resources that are kind of freely available for everyone. Um, so I did the course um, that and all of the videos and materials available. It's called Ready for R. And then there is an interactive um, uh, version, learn, uh, learning the Tidyverse lessons called R Bootcamp. Um, I just want, I'm not bragging, but I do like this review that a clinician told me I am a, that I am a very patient man. <laughs> So really the point of the course is how do you deliver actionable analytics in healthcare? So we want to deliver this kind of experience to our students. So, you know, part of it, it's, you know, the part of the course, and this is what I really do want to emphasize, is that um, data science is kind of only one part of it. Um, the other, and that's kind of what I focus on um, at, at OHSU um, during the course. But Kaiser Permanente um, Insight and Brian Sikora's side also talks a lot about the organizational aspects and strategy. And in the end, we force our students to actually apply both of these by having a final presentation. And I'll talk more about what that final presentation looks like in a second. So, I want to just talk about clinicians as learners, and this is no offense to clinicians. This has kind of been built up over a long <laughs> time of interacting with clinicians in this course. Um, so uh, just saying, like, Mary is a clinician who wants to understand how analytics can be delivered in her healthcare organization. Um, what are her special, and thinking about what are her special needs, um, she has very little time. She likes to learn on her own and she has a hard time asking for help and at the same time is hard on herself. So um, how do we meet these needs? So in terms of no time, we've tried to structure the assignments to gradually increase in difficulty. And we think very much like in terms of kind of just in time instruction. So what do you need to do to accomplish, you need to know to accomplish a task? Um, in terms of everything, we tr really try have worked on this kind of self-learning model, and this kind of started kind of evolving in the beginning. Um, you know, first we kind of started having the students work in R Markdown, um, but you know, as kind of things progressed and we learned more about kind of the R uh, and R Studio ecosystem, we started kind of including more and more kind of aspects to kind of support this. Uh, so uh, we started using um, our studio projects um, as a way to kind of package assignments. And now finally, um, in the last two years, we've been working with our studio cloud and uh, which is basically kind of uh, this online um, 
platform, you can basically point a student to it and they have like a full instance of R with all of the assignments and everything in the, in the workspace. Uh, so this has been a really kind of helpful tool and we're going to continue to use it. Um, also, so like, you know, have, like when, when they have a hard time asking for help, um, you know, we do, uh, do do these things like, you know, Cass mentioned kind of having a buddy. We do do that. We make, we make the students team up. Um, I try to be available as much as possible, like in terms of Slack for quick questions, um, having office hours available. Um, and now I've kind of been working on like with making making my, myself available via scheduled appointments. So it's just kind of making, making um, gi giving support to the students when they really need it. So let's talk a little bit about what like the un overlying like problem we, we are trying to solve in the course. So uh, the overall problem is we're trying to predict 30 day readmissions and, and this is within a simulated hospital patient cohort. Um, and we do this by implementing a metric called LACE. Uh, so LACE is short for um, length of stay, um, acuity of admission, uh, any comorbidities the patient has and the number of ER admissions. So this is, it's nice because there's kind of a very focused task. Um, students will have to pull the data out of our simulated data warehouse. But again, it's not just about implementing the metric. They have to communicate how effective it is in the patient population. Um, so talking a little bit about the data. So the data is a simulated data warehouse. Um, so these are some of the tables that are in there. So you can see like, you know, there's a patient table, there's a hospital encounter table. So these are all of the uh, encounters that patients have within the hospital. And then also there's a diagnosis. Yeah, and we know that this is very simplified, but we've kind of, kind of honed this down to kind of get to the essentials in terms of learning. And it's also, so it's a, uh, it's, Structured as a four month extract of patients and it's based on real clinical data. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've been trying to figure out exactly how to incorporate Brian's piece on here. And this, although this is just one slide, I just want to emphasize that this is like Brian does kind of an amazing job at kind of talking about. Um, talking about kind of the organizational challenges of bringing analytics to like a healthcare organization. I mean, there's all sorts of real, real, real hard, hard earned lessons that he gives the students in terms of how do you kind of um, get your project visibility? How do you get sponsorship? And how do you ask for things? So these are all very kind of, um, very, very kind of so social and organizational parts. But, you know, we feel that like this is like an essential part of teaching data analytics. It's not just about teaching R. So I just wanted to give you kind of an idea of what the assignments look like. So, like, and I, like we said, like the, the assignments are very kind of uh, they're they're very kind of gradual in terms of things. We start in terms uh, with like doing exploratory data analysis. So this is a great visualization tool by um, Nick Tierney um, by and R, R OpenSci, um, and it's called uh, VisDat. And it, what it is is it's like kind of this quick kind of dashboard look at the data, so you can understand whether variables what whether there's kind of missing valuables and what kinds of variables and values there are in the data. Um, okay, why, why did my slide not? Sorry, I'm having issues with, um, I'm having issues with uh, sharing it just, okay. So let's talk about, uh, so this is kind of the introductory SQL assignment. And again, our, our clinicians are not necessarily like, you know, completely conversant in R and um, SQL. So like really kind of having these kinds of great graduated kind of assignments. So this first 
assignment is about just kind of selecting columns and data and looking at the actual data in the tables. Um, and amazingly enough, like, you know, as like the students kind of go on and they learn, they, um, they start being able to do lots more kind of sophisticated queries. So here they're calculating kind of what are the number of um, emergency room visits from the uh, clinical data warehouse. And you can see this is not simple SQL code. So they are starting to really think about ways of summarizing and aggregating the data. So we, we feel that this is like a really important thing. Like we could have start, started out with cal like, you know, having all of these different scores calculated, but I mean, it's, I think it is important for them to have ownership of the whole process. So once they have those kind of scores calculated, Related. They can build predictive models. Um, we teach them basically logistic regression, and we talk about lots of concepts such as ROC and kind of, um, and this part of this, again, like thinking about how to work kind of the organizational part, like how do you work in organizational values into kind of deciding uh, how, a how a predictive model is applied. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm ex I was excited about the tree he uh, Trang's tree heater talk um, because I always love to see good teaching tools. Um, this is kind of the party output, but you know they can build they can build you basically do machine learning with decision trees. Um, and we have um, and I'm excited. Um, I was so excited for the tidy models workshop because like I'm definitely going to be work um, integrating more of tidy models into the into the the, uh, into the lessons. Okay, so I've been kind of stepping around this final presentation, but like the thought is that they present, um, they want to, they're, they're doing a presentation to an executive team. So this kind of lace, calculating this lace score is like a pilot project. Um, and part of it, so this is like, I just love working with Brian because, you know, he really kind of breaks it down. What is kind of an effective presentation? And it's, it's all kind of building towards having a call or ask to action. So like, you know, we want you to invest more in this, in, in our program, or we want to implement something. So, you know, he's very good at talking about things like, so what is the impact of not changing? So if we just kind of have the status quo, what what's going to happen? Um, and then, you know, really we spend a lot of time talking about like how to present results. Um, and this has been a hard earned lesson. We've had students just basically show our model output and that has not been <laughs> successful. So we spend a lot of time thinking about data presentation and data storytelling. So in turn, let's um, uh, just want to talk about in terms of outcomes, like, you know, some of the presentations. And I think this is one of the best outcomes. The students come out with different ways of looking at the data. So um, I don't know if Kevin is online, but uh, just shout outs to Kevin and Mina. So this is their way of kind of um, presenting the data. And you can see that they, they've really kind of thought through, like, you know, in terms of highlighting, you know, different kind of aspects of the data. And the neatest thing really is that, you know, the students think of different ways of presenting the data. I mean, here, um, Ariel, Rose, and Alfonso decided to talk about kind of gender bias in the data. Um, so shout out to Pierrette Lowe. I know she's on here. Um, just So this was kind of how they kind of uh, visualized the data and kind of talked through it. Um, Dan Slater, Laura Hickerson. So they decided to kind of show, you know, the distribution of scores across and like highlight the highest risk group. So like, you know, that was kind of the focus of their talk was like kind of targeting these kinds of high risk individuals. Um, and this is, um, so uh, Justine, Dan, and Xiao, uh, this is their presentation and they're really thinking about kind of in terms of like, you know, uh, CMS penalties. And of course, you know, implementing this has a cost, but, you know, thinking about what the balance is. 
Um, and this, this is, this was, I'm not saying all of any of these presentations are better than the others, but I thought this was really effective. Um, so Megan, Wei Chen and Colleen thought about, you know, what are the cost savings in terms of implementing the project? So I, I think, you know, this is, I, you know, it's one of these things I feel like the students have been really empowered to think about the data and they get very creative and they think about kind of the data in, in different ways. And it's always fun to see that. So I wanna just talk about, I'll just kind of wrap things up talking about some of the student testimonies about the course. So uh, Kristen Stevens, uh, she said, basically the course has made her a much more patient and effective collaborator. Um, so I think that's been one of the, the real strengths about the course is like really kind of that camaraderie the students get with working with each other. Um, another theme, uh, students, you know, the, the, the students really like kind of the diverse set of learners that come into the course. Uh, the other set of learners that I haven't talked about are kind of our bioinformatics students. We make them take this course, but it's been a very useful bridge to kind of getting them to talk to each other. And I think there's been a lot of useful conversations that's come out of this. Um, so. <laughs> I get to embarrass Pirette again, but um, so, you know, it's, she really feels like the course is, you know, it's soup to nuts. I mean, it really kind of covers a lot um, and it's just very useful to anyone who's interested in working with data in a healthcare setting. Um, and finally, so Frank Logano, um, so he's an MD clinician and he's just really talking about that this, like he really thought that the course was helpful and like, you know, more informatics programs should have like a course like this for clinicians and other clin clinical informatics students. Um, not to toot my own horn, um, but we did win a, an award. Um, the word itself is not that important, but the fact is that we had multiple students nominate us. So that was really amazing. Um, the students really loved um, like, you know, our availability, um, like, you know, kind of the way the uh, projects were planned. And then, you know, the, they really felt like it really resulted in essential research skills um, in, not, in not only bioinformatics, computer science, but generally across biology and medicine. So to me, that's one of the best outcomes I could have ever hoped for. So just um, wrapping things up. So the course combines like uh, practical and organizational skills. And through that kind of final project, the, the students are forced to combine them. And um, the other side is like, you know, it's really kind of shored with these real life lessons. Um, I didn't talk too much about this, but um, Brian's team talks about like, you know, the Kaiser Permanente like implementation of LACE. And there's a lot of talk about kind of evaluating it for effectiveness. And so again, like applying the knowledge is really kind of important. And I feel like it kind of cements everything that's come before it. So just want to thank both the OHSU and Kaiser teams. Like this has been like kind of a huge kind of undertaking. It's like, you know, not only interdepartmental, but it's inter like, you know, interinstitutional. So it's just been kind of testament to everybody's really hard work in making this this go. Um, so the slides are here. Like I hopefully people have seen the little link as we've gone on. Uh, here's my information. Um, this is the GitHub repository. So if you're interested in looking at the R notebooks um, and everything, like I'm happy uh, you can take a look at it. I'm, I need to clean it up a little bit. So um, I didn't have enough time before this class, uh, this talk. And I just, you know, I, I just wanna kind of, this is our class from last year. So I'm happy to take any questions. The, um, the top question is that uh, talking about the um, buddy coding paired programming and is there a virtual platform that facilitates paired screen sharing? So uh, like we, you know, I know that our, our studio, it's um, had implemented some sort of way to do kind of uh, like having two multiple people work on code at the same time. Uh, we haven't looked into that. Um, uh, so I, 
like we really just kind of talk about pair programming strategies that work for people. Like for example, like, you know, one person is kind of um, the coder and the other person is kind of the driver. And so kind of talking about these kinds of strategies of working together. Um, it's, uh, I will say like moving this course completely online has been a real challenge because um, the course itself has been, it, it's been like some, uh, on online learning and then there is this in-person week and I feel like having that in-person week like literally you know four and a half days of students kind of being access uh have and where the instructors are accessible and they can ask questions it's been really great as a professional collaborator educator mentor <laughs> you know how do you guard against giving tree style burnout yeah, this is a good question, and I don't really have a good answer for it. Um, I have been working with more kind of setting professional boundaries. Um, so there's a great book. Um, I can't remember her name, but it's called Unf Your Boundaries. Um, and it's really about thinking about, you know, what is kind of, what are, what are the things you want to do versus what are things people things asking of you? <laughs> And um, one, have you spent any time thinking about teaching Git or, with a GUI for truly distributed analyses? Yes. Um, so I've been having conversations with lots of people about how to best teach Git, and we're still working on that. Um, you know, it's it's. I feel like you know the the course is really packed right now, so it's trying to at least kind of show them what it's for. That's kind of the level we can kind of cover it. Okay, I think that uh, we need to wrap things up mm -hmm. and we'll uh, head to the next session. Okay, thanks much. everyone. This was super fun.